welcome to uh, Wednesday, our broadcast for Wednesday night, Lancaster Church of Christ. Um, it is April 8th of 2020, uh, but we are here more to talk about Wednesday of the most important week in the history of the world. And we've been studying through these days of this last week in Jesus' life this week, uh, and I hope it's been um, interesting and a blessing to you. Appreciate you for following along. Uh, Wednesday is an interesting day because we, we it's, one, it's the one day of the last week um, where some say we don't know anything that happened. Um, there's nothing that it's clearly stated happened on Wednesday, like the other days. Uh, if you saw yesterday's broadcast on Tuesday, there's a lot of stuff about Tuesday. A lot of chapters in the Gospels address the events of Tuesday. If you remember all the questions and answers between Jesus and his enemies, uh, those who were wanting to kill him. Uh, a lot of... Um, back and forth between them, and then a long speech that Jesus made at the end of Tuesday uh, about the end of Jerusalem and also about the end of the world, his second coming. So a lot went on on Tuesday. In comparison, very little on Wednesday. Uh, we do think that there is at least one thing that we can point to that was uh, uh, an occurrence on Wednesday of the last week. And that's what we'll talk about from Luke chapter 22 for a few minutes this evening. Just remind you sort of how Tuesday ended. Um, of course, Jesus is out on the Mount of Olives speaking to his disciples about the end of all things, uh, both Jerusalem and the world. Back in, in the city, um, according to Matthew chapter 26, the religious leaders are meeting these these guys who have really planned to, to kill Jesus for for two years. They're meeting um, and discussing what to do because all their attempts have failed, uh, especially on that Tuesday. They've not been able to trip Jesus up, and they just they haven't haven't changed their mind uh, that they have to eliminate Jesus, but they have changed their mind about when they say we can't. We can't possibly do it this week, not while Passover is going on. Remember that the city is filled with pilgrims um, from around that part of the world who had come for Passover. Jesus is very popular with them, and um, they don't feel that they can arrest Jesus and, and kill him uh, while... Passover is going on, so they make a decision, and, Mark, and Matthew tells us about this in chapter 26, um, to delay their plans um, to to rest Jesus and and have him tried and killed. Uh, but that changes on we think Wednesday, and we alluded to that in the broadcast last night in the lesson. Um, their plans are moved back up, um, and you may or may not know what caused that. But let's let's take a moment and look at what it was that got them back on schedule for their awful deeds that they wanted to execute against the Lord. Reading in uh, Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 6. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. That again sort of rehashes what Matthew says in chapter 26, 1 through 5. Um, they're, they're plotting, they're trying to figure out a way to kill him, uh, but they have this problem that he's very popular with the people. Well, it goes on, verse 3, with these ominous words. It says, Then Satan 
entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of a crowd. So this is uh, the event that changed their mind and said, oh, maybe we can do what we want to do this week. And it comes in the form of a betrayal by uh, one of Jesus' closest followers, one of the twelve, Judas. Um, remember, if you've, if you've read the Gospels all along, Jesus has predicted several times that he would be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. And here, uh, this is coming true in the form of the actions of Judas. Um, Judas uh, is you know, a terribly sad character. He's, he's a villain, of course, in, in our eyes, and rightfully so. I wouldn't want to defend him in any way, but to, th to think that uh, the rest of the Twelve um, would have later on said, you know, we're not surprised that it was Judas. I think that's, that's probably not correct at all. Uh, Judas was the one that they had entrusted uh, their, their bank account with. You know, he held the money bag. If you were in a group of 12 people, and, and who would you choose to be the one who carried the money, who had such an important responsibility? Um, they chose Judas. And um, I think when eventually they found out who it was that betrayed Jesus, it had to be a crushing shock to them. Um, maybe the one guy they wouldn't suspect would have been Judas. And, of course, there's all kinds of speculation about uh, why Judas did this. Some people want to sort of rehabilitate Judas and ascribe worthy motives to him. Worth, you know, misguided but worthy motives. Scripture really doesn't give us the motives. The closest thing to a motive is that uh, he loved money and he was a he was a thief, and he was offended by the way some of the money was being spent. Could it have been that something as base as that that made him uh, betray Jesus? He does he does agree to a fee for the betrayal. Uh, we found, find out in uh, one of the other gospel accounts how much that was, 30 pieces of silver. Uh, Zechariah had prophesied this hundreds of years before, but for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave in the Old Testament, uh, Judas betrays his Lord. And, um, you know, it's just a... A terribly sad situation it had to be uh, crushing, as I said, to the other disciples um, that, that Judas did this. Not a surprise to Jesus at all. He knew who was going to betray him. Um, but um, as we see over in John, he didn't give it away, at least very clearly. Um, in fact, Jesus washed Judas's feet when he washed the feet of the other disciples as well at the same time. A uh, couple little notes about the reading that we had from Luke 22. Um, Judas um, confers with the chief priests. Um, these are, as we said, the, the, the uh, Sadducees, likely. Um, the Sadducees were most of the priests. They were wealthy. They were also politically connected. Um, but it also says, and the officers, he, he bargained with the officers. These, this is sort of like the temple police. These are the ones who will uh, be the strong arms that come to the garden and arrest Jesus the next day, the next evening. And um, it says when Judas came to them, they were glad. Uh, because now they have a way 
they think to, to arrest Jesus without anybody knowing it. One of his own disciples uh, is going to hand him over um, in, in secret. And we'll see how that happens when we look at the events of Thursday and Friday. Uh, but I'd also uh, underline verse 6 where it says, So he consented, that is Judas, and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of a crowd. Judas is also worried about a crowd. And uh, as we know, he's going to betray Jesus in the privacy of a garden, um, sort of in the middle of the night. Uh, but one thing about that, that last verse, chapter 22, verse 6, is it, um, Judas, um, this is a premeditated act. You know, did you notice how it said he looked for an opportunity to betray him? He is taking his time and thinking it out. Um, when he brings uh, the authorities to Jesus in the garden, uh, that isn't a spur-of-the-moment thing. He has looked for his opportunity, and, um, and, and then he takes advantage of it when it happens. So a very, very sad part of the story, we think that this bargain is struck on Wednesday of the last week. Uh, we really don't know what the Lord and the other disciples were doing at this time. But you have the other part of this uh, where it says that, um, that Satan entered into Judas and inspired him to, to do this. And that's one, one thing we don't want to forget as we study this week. You know, you have all these things going on in the physical realm. Uh, but there is a spiritual war going on. And Satan is very much involved. You might remember that when Jesus was tempted early in his ministry, in fact, right after his baptism, um, and he successfully thwarts uh, Satan's attempts, to, to get him to do various things. It says at the end of that that uh, Satan left him and looked for a more opportune time to uh, come after him. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that he waited all the way to this moment um, in the last week. I'm sure he attacked Jesus other times, but this was certainly uh, what he considered an opportune time, and he enters into Judas and uh, influences him. Uh, he, we see uh, over in the Gospel of John as well, twice John mentions this, that, that Satan um, spoke to Judas's heart and um, sort of whispered these ideas into him and influenced him. There is not just the physical stuff going on, um, during this week, this last week, but there is a spiritual warfare being waged that is very real and very powerful and uh, actually more important than the physical that's going on. So those are the main things, uh, the main event that takes place, we think, on Wednesday of the most important week in the history of the world. Um, Thursday is going to be taken up with getting ready for Passover. Passover begins at sundown on Thursday night, and Jesus is centering a lot of his actions around Passover because it's so rich in symbolism and linked to his sacrifice. So we'll see how Jesus uses that. and uh, we'll see Jesus at the Last Supper with the disciples, what we call the Last Supper, and that, of course, is a Passover meal originally. And uh, those, those are the, the big events that happen on, on Thursday, especially toward evening. And then the betrayal takes place after that. But we hope you're having a good day. Uh, we miss you all. I was, I was thinking before we started the study tonight of uh, here we are on Wednesday again. And it's, it's strange, isn't it? not to be together on Wednesday night. Um, my life has had a certain rhythm 
since I was born that involves Sundays and Wednesdays. And uh, this is no doubt the longest stretch of time it's been disturbed, and I'm just thinking of all the things I miss being together with you all. Um, and I probably shouldn't start talking about them because I might get emotional. <laughs> but uh, that will end soon enough, and we'll be back together. Hopefully these um, little studies are help to you through your long days, and hope you're healthy, uh, both physically and spiritually. And thank you for tuning in and being a part of the study. We will uh, hopefully talk to you again tomorrow. God bless.